Second Corinthians chapter 12. Praise the Lord. By the way, I, I probably have 30 suits, a couple of tuxedos. I probably have at least 100 ties. I just recently bought a tie a couple of weeks ago. Down at uh, MCC, I think it was. I got a free tuxedo from the... I walk into the uh, cleaner down there, right, right here, and she just said, well, here's a tuxedo, guy left it here. And it's your size. She says anything my size. They, they don't come back. So I got another tuxedo. <laughs> and uh, so on. Well, I'll tell you what, yesterday that girl fell asleep in the, uh, the 1922 crib, whatever that was. She went out. And I looked at her, her expression changed. I mean, she had the face of an angel. My wife and I looked at her, I said, look at that face. I said, that's the face of an angel. And uh, uh, that, um, but one day she'll need Jesus. Does she need Jesus right now? No, as far as she needs Jesus for heaven, but that's guaranteed right now. And then uh, you know, I'll know I'll know when you're when you're growing. Uh, yesterday I had uh, uh, there was a one was really telling on their brother, telling, tattle telling. And I told the wife I said, well, when when is, when the tattle Tailing stops, then then I'll know. I said, yeah, I said, well, I didn't have to have any cattle tailing. I said, I already know. And I said, but then I'll know that you're growing. Growing in what? Growing in what? Grace. Amen. Anybody too warm? Well, let's get started. Second Corinthians chapter twelve, verse nine. Uh, we are going to do, uh, yeah, try that thing. See if that'll work. There we go. She likes it. Mikey likes it. Mikey likes it. It's the, a verse we all know very well. It's verse 9, 2 Corinthians 12, verse 9. And it's just one, two, three, four, five, six, six words. My grace is sufficient for thee. Father, bless our preaching. Bless our preaching. May it be uh, fruitful and edifying, encouraging. We want to be an encouragement today, Father, for all those that truly need to be touched by your word, touched by our, our Lord and Savior, Father, today, that you would be with each and every one of us now, Father. Whatever I, I am to add to this, that it, it, it would take place. Uh, you know, I didn't write a lot of things down in here to remind me. And if, it, if that's your will, Father, then so be it now. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Every story has a hero. And the Bible is no exception. Christ, the hero of the faith. Christ, the captain of our salvation. Christ, the name when spoken is above all other names. Christ, the name in which the devils also believe and tremble. Christ, the one who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Christ, who now is alive forevermore. I mean, what a privilege it is for us to mention his name on television. Amen. Before uh, uh, we could call it the Tri-County area. Tri-County area has two and a half million residents 
people. Now we don't say two and a half million people are watching, but the audience is large. Jesus Christ. Can such an one help us, encourage us, and sustain us? You know, all of us here have our trials and tribulations, every one of us. Every one of us have our issues. Every one of us has uh, uh, getting bugged by Satan, you know, every, every one of us. And can such a one, Jesus Christ, help us? My grace is sufficient for thee. Paul needed and had, he had an infirmity. And he, he sought the Lord, it says, thrice. But Jesus, his response was, my grace is sufficient for me. He who hath made bare his holy arm in the eyes of all the nations and put all his enemies to flight, my grace is sufficient for thee, is what the Savior says. Sufficient for the little child is sufficient for the ancient grandmother, for the tempted teenager, for the busy mom, for the hard-working father, for the unemployed, for he who is sick, physically sick, mentally sick, for those that are persecuted, and for the outcast, for all people. My grace is sufficient for thee, is what the Savior says. Why? Because the weakness of God is stronger than men. Amen. As weak as God can make himself, he is still stronger than you. His grace is sufficient for you. My grace is sufficient for thee. Written so long ago, yet I am the Lord, I change not. Jesus is not changing, amen. That is why my grace is sufficient for thee. Christ, the one in which came all grace, as it says, he was full of grace. And with that grace, an ever abundant amount of grace, grace for grace, He'll add more and more and more and more. Grace which never runs dry, for the well is deep. Every story has a hero, and the greatest of heroes, the greatest of all, is Christ. But grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. My grace is sufficient for thee. I guess... Our first one here for his grace being sufficient. His grace is sufficient to save. To save. No matter how far in the gutter you've ever been, God's grace is gracious enough to save your soul. Amen. Amen. Even if you feel as though you're not so much a sinner. That is a danger. But the original sin that you have, the original sin that you have needs forgiveness. Yeah, I, looked at, I, I, I looked at her yesterday and I, I, was, uh, I, I was sitting there in the barber chair and, uh, and I sit there in, in the, uh, next to the cradle I sit there because they're old enough to roll. They could roll out of there. And then we don't want to hear boom, 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 and have them fall on the floor. So we, we may take turns. And I looked at that face and I said, there's the face of an angel. Her face was the expression of her face. She was, I mean, she was out cold. It was the face of an angel. And I, and I thought to myself, and I thought to myself what Paul said, that... Uh, you know, where there is no law, there is no transgression. And thought about it. I said, this baby hasn't even sinned. She's not conscious of it. God's grace is sufficient to take her to heaven. But Paul writes, but when sin, re but, but when sin revived, you know, when the, 
when their conscience revived, they became a sinner again. He needs Jesus. This girl's not conscious of anything. She's conscious of her mother. <laughs> I want food, shelter, and clothing. But when it revived again, then he, Paul says, I think he says, it's, it's a, a First Corinthians, or no, Romans 7. And then he died. That's when he dies. And he needs Jesus. Comes a time in our life. You know, I never had anybody standing over me saying you need to get saved. I never had anybody standing over me saying you need to get baptized. God told me. I remember one time in church, I raised my hand and I was saved. I said, I want to get baptized. I did, I did that. I said, I, I want to get baptized. Uh, I, I shocked the preacher. If he had false teeth, he would have swallowed him. He, he was shocked. Yeah. Because I needed that. I needed to make a public profession. My grace is sufficient for thee, enough grace to save. God was manifest in the flesh. As bread is made of wheat and wine is made of grapes, so Christ is made of a woman. God manifest in the flesh. In the creation, in the creation, man was made in God's image. In the incarnation, God was made in man's image. God sent forth his son made of a woman. The call and command of the Father shows the weight and the importance. For the call came from the Father. Oh, the promise was given. The seed of the woman was to break the serpent's head. As the first woman, as the first woman had made man a sinner, the woman now brings man a savior. Amen. Do we see people being saved? We do not see where the wind listeth. The wind bloweth where it listeth. We cannot tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. So is the spirit that blows upon people. Our job, ours is to sow, and Christ's job, Christ is to save. Amen. Our job is just to sow seed. I mean, we got hell going, hell is going to be on five buses going all over the city of Cleveland. They don't leave it in one terminal, they move it to other terminals, so it goes everywhere. For the next, uh, four, what is it, four weeks, it's going to go everywhere. Th uh, th 12 weeks, 12 weeks. Going everywhere, sowing seeds. On the TV, sowing seeds. Ours is to sow, Christ is to save, but God giveth the increase, amen. As the Lord's hand waxed short, is the question a rhetorical question? Obviously the answer is no. God will reach to the uttermost. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. And it has appeared in the form of Jesus Christ. And all, and all we are to do is to tell others of Christ. You know, what's the other one up there? We have the crosses. It just says, Jesus saves. Is that what's up there? Jesus saves. Amen. Is not Christ the hope of glory? Christ in you, the hope of glory. The Lord Jesus Christ, which is our hope. Christ, the reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. My grace is sufficient for, for thee. Sufficient enough to save. Grace enough to save to the uttermost. Right? What do they say? The uttermost to the guttermost. His grace is sufficient for thee to sanctify you. To set, set you apart for his holy use. Did not Christ say, go and sin no more? You know, we, 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 we preach on this sanctification, getting right. Now, I'll know when you're growing in Jesus 
is when you quit telling me about what your brother didn't do. I already know your brother didn't do it. When you stop that, I'll know that you've grown. A little bit at a time. That you're being sanctified. Go and sin no more, our Lord said. Be ye holy, for I am holy. And how are we to do such things? My grace is sufficient for thee. I, the Lord, which sanctifieth you. Sin is as weeds, and weeds grow of themselves. I, you know, it, it, within two months, folks, you're going to have a war going on in your yard. <laughs> weeds are going to be everywhere. But sanctification is as a flower, and flowers are planted. And when a person is saved, they are partakers of the divine nature. Tis the sanctification of the spirit. It becomes something inside as a plant, not something on the outside, but on the inside. It is not as dew which wets the leaf, but the sap which wets the root. It's something on the inside. Sanctification deeply rooted in the soul, in the hidden man of the heart. I would ask my preacher, I know I've said this before, I'd ask my preacher uh, on a regular basis. I'd go up to him and say, it was the first, in that church it was the first, you didn't call him pastor, you called him by his first name. Lawrence, have I, have I changed? I mean, I wanted to change. I would go, uh, like every, every month I'd go up to him and say, Lawrence, have I changed? You know what he would say to me? He would laugh, he said, oh yeah, 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 Gary, you've changed, you've changed. He'd encourage me that I was, that I was changing. I probably wasn't changing much. But I wanted a change. I didn't want a change. I wanted to change. For the lost, the whole head is sick and the whole heart faint. It corrupts the whole soul. But when a person is saved, Christ saves the whole soul. The very God of peace sanctify you wholly and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Like planting flowers. The new man. Not a new eye, or a new tongue, or a new leg, or a new arm, but a new man, wholly sanctified. You, you say, well, uh, boy, take it to heart. I, I want you to take it to heart. As the sun is to the world, so is sanctification to the soul. It is the shine upon your entire life, upon your entire being. My grace is sufficient for thee. Is grace enough? Out of Christ's side came blood and water. That's what came out of his side. Blood to justify and water to sanctify. Blood to save and water to sanctify. Amen. To continue washing you and I. My grace is sufficient for thee. Sufficient to save. Sufficient to sanctify. Sufficient to serve. For me to live is Christ. Now... I know everybody's got different motives for getting up in the morning. You know, your bills, your taxes, food, shelter, clothing. I mean, those are good motives. Paul writes, for me to live is Christ. Christ who is our life. See, grace sufficient for thee to save us, to sanctify us, giving us the strength to serve. And how did Paul do it all? Today I decided not to do it all. Today I took over three of my grandsons and I said, pick it up. They picked it up and they brought it over and they threw it up there. I mean, you know, enough's enough for me. Let them do it. 
So how did Paul do it all? But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, yet not I, yet not I, yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. Amen. So our sign lays on its side in the front yard. We, we think the deer come along. You know, we'll, we'll find holes in it. We think the buck comes up there and he, he just lances that thing and, and rips it out of the ground. So today, tomorrow, we'll go out there and put a new sign out there. Uh, you know, my daughter bought a house down the street, uh, eight-tenths of a mile, about eight -tenths, not even a mile down the road. You know how the people identified who we were? The owner of the house, the daughter, came up to me and said, are you the people with the sign in your front yard? I said, yeah, that's us. Wouldn't you like to be identified like that? That's my preference. Yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. When Christ becomes our life, serving Christ will be as Jacob served for Rachel. His seven years service seemed but just a few days. They seemed unto him but a few days, the word says. See, the wife and I talk, we, we say we're already in our 70s. You know, the end of the, you say, well, it's not the end of the, it, it's not the end of life. And we could live another 10 or 20 years. And we, we know that. But, but folks, we, 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 we know the sun is setting in the horizon. We, we know that. And it seems as though it's been just a few days. Loving Christ. Believing Christ is the difference between making your journey to heaven. It's one of two ways. Either it is 11 days journey from Horeb by the way of Mount Seir unto Kadesh Barnea. It's either that way, 11 days journey as it seems, or wandering for 40 years in the wilderness. Take your pick. Loving Christ and believing Christ will make the difference to see feeling as though it was just yesterday we got started or it took forever to get here. Truly, when you realize how close you are to the finish and that knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. It is nearer than when we believe. It is close to the coming of our Lord. We're, we're, we're almost there. Keep serving. And it's grace enough to give us the strength to make it. We're near the end. I mean, what kind of a, what kind of a people elect a man who can't put two sentences together? What does it say for those that elected him? Or did they really elect them? Is this all right? I mean, you, you look around us. I mean, we're coming to the end where you don't even have to hold the steering wheel in your car. You don't even, and you're, you're going to get around. You probably just speak it into the microphone. You only have to punch it in. We're, 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 we're close. My grace is sufficient for thee to save us, to sanctify us, to for us to serve, to secure us. Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me. Father, keep them. We are secure. No man shall pluck them out of my hand. You, will, you may be abandoned by others, but you will never be abandoned by our Lord and Savior. Amen. It is that wicked one touches us not. God said it, I believe it. Amen. It is the Spirit that seals us. As the Word says, His seed remaineth in Him. His seed remains in us. Have we not the anointing of the Holy Spirit? The anointing which ye have received of Him abideth in you. 
Are we not already seated in heavenly places? The word of God says we're already seated there. And made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Reservations are made and will not be broken. Amen. Are we not part of Christ's body? I don't know of any operation going on. Jesus isn't going under the, under the uh, getting ether and going on, on the table in the operating room and having an amputation. Are we not part of Christ's body? Now are ye the body of Christ? And no part of Christ's body will perish nor be broken. A bone of him shall not be broken. Amen. Having obtained eternal redemption. Eternal redemption for us. Redemption that is eternal. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having a seal. Even if you don't know, the Lord knows. The Lord knoweth them that are his. Even if you doubt or have any, you're skeptic in any way, the Lord knows if you belong to Him. My grace is sufficient for thee. To save, sanctify, serve, secure, to sustain us. To sustain us to the end. My grace is sufficient for thee. To sustain, to keep you going. You want a good, you, you want a good thing? It is a good thing that the heart be established with grace, amen. Demas' heart was not established with grace. Demas hath forsaken me. He was not as a star, but as a common, and he soon burned himself out. He was as a man who built his house upon the sand. You know, I see that thing that went on, a, is it Turkey where they had that, uh, the uh, earthquake? Yeah, yeah. Now, I'm, I'm gonna ask, what do you expect when you build it on sand and shifting rocks made out of concrete that crumbles, what, what, what do you expect? A little bit of shaking, the whole thing collapses. So yeah, but, but a little bit of shaking, the whole thing collapses when you build buildings like that. As a, as a man who built his house upon the sand, but we are not so. Is there some superior power to hold us, to sustain us, and to keep us from falling? Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling. Amen. My grace is sufficient for thee. Are we not commanded to strengthen those things which remain? I ask, have you left your first love? You know, it's like a marriage, I guess. Does Jesus love us? Does he uh, fall out of love with us? No. No. But I tell people, you, you, you got married, you love one another, and sometimes you fall out of love. Well, then, why don't you fall in love again? See, I ask, have you left your first love? Christ has grace enough and more to revive such love if you let him. Fall in love with him again. Were there not five wise and five foolish virgins? All slept, the wise virgins slumbered, yet grace to sustain them was still there. They all slumbered and slept, every last one of them. As Eutychus had fallen into a deep sleep and fell from a window from the third loft and was taken up dead, yet Paul fell on him, embraced him, and found, and he said, his life is in him. Though a saint may have little faith, praise God, one cannot say he has no faith. The stream may be low, but not dry. What about those wise virgins? They slept, but their lamps still burned. The grace to run, the grace to fight, the grace to pray, the grace to read. God gives you all of that. We come to the end of the race by running. We win the fight by fighting. I have fought a good fight. Pray as Christ commanded, watch and pray. Did Peter fail? He slept. He denied Christ. He deserted Christ. And he went a fishing. 
but my grace is sufficient for thee. What did our Lord do? But I pray for thee that thy faith fail not. As Christ prayed for Peter, Christ now prays for believers. Amen. As the Spirit is at work in the heart, so is Christ at work in heaven. Amen. At work in heaven, praying for us. Does the Spirit dwell within? The Holy Ghost which dwelleth in us. He who dwells in a house keeps the house in repair. He dwells in here and keeps the house in repair. You know, we, we, we don't know. Sometimes we don't know what we're going to do with our, with our estate, if you call it an estate. If, if one of the kids or grandkids live in there, they're, they're going to be a requirement. They have to pay the taxes, and they have to keep the house in repair, and not the Home Depot way. Can't be Home Depot. Jesus lives in here. He's paid the taxes, and he's keeping the house in repair. Do you have a river of living water flowing within? Out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Tis a river which will never dry up. Amen. The Lord has placed something within us so we won't depart from him. But I will put my fear in their hearts that they shall not depart from me. Christ has purchased us with his own blood. Christ will not lose his purchase. He will not lose what he has bought. Amen. Bought and paid for. The hypocrite is as the meteor. They fall away. The believer is as the true stars. They will not fall. The hypocrite has tasted the word of God but has not eaten. You know, they taste it. Folks, that's not salvation. It's eating it. The hypocrite has tasted the word of God, but has not eaten. But we are persuaded better things of you and things that accompany salvation. My grace is sufficient for thee. It is he who will sustain thee. Isn't it he who keeps the feet of his saints? As it says in Hannah's prayer, he will keep the feet of his saints. Does the devil tempt? There's so much temptation out there. Tempt with many tempters. Yet as the Lord shut the mouths of the lions in the den which Daniel was placed, so God will sustain us, though tempted by the fiery darts of the wicked. Every one of those lines is like temptation, but God closed their mouths. What shall sustain thee? Once in Christ, forever in Christ. Have you slipped or fallen away? Just as an Israelite could never wholly sell or lose his land of inheritance, he could, he could not sell or wholly sell it or lose all of it. Right? After the Jubilee, he always get, they all, it was always returned. What we have can never wholly slip away. Did not the prodigal spend all? He spent all! Yet he returned to receive the shoes, the ring, the robe, and the fatted cap. Amen. Right now, are you under attack? I'm not walking in your shoes. Only you can walk in your shoes. There are people everywhere. They are heavily under attack. Under attack and weak in the faith. Was Paul under attack? Yet grace came as a medicine. As Mary chose that better part which could not be taken away, so it is. Grace cannot be taken away. Grace to sustain us that the hoary head be found in the way of righteousness. Grace to sustain us so that we would grow in grace, 
So our life in Christ will save the best wine for last. But folks, for us, we're saved. The best wine is still yet coming. That our works, that the last to be more than the first. You know, I, I thought about, man, when, 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 we, when we broke ground and, and, and built this building, Folks, our payments were over 2000 a month. We had this handful of people and offerings of 180 bucks, you know? There was a whole lot of shame going on. You know what God gave me at that time? Yeah, yeah, think about that. You know, maybe I'm exaggerating on the 180 bucks. But God gave me work over there. Like I couldn't believe that sustained me personally. It, it just it just came in, and and now at the end here, the end that the last be more than the first, because God probably this because God counted us what faithful, and that what happened to Timothy, God hath put me in the ministry, having counted me. Shall you finish? There may be a time in your life you think, I can't go another step. This man began to build and was not able to finish. Shall you finish? I drove, drive over to Joe and Tammy's house and I, I drive over the bridge that they, just, they had just built there over uh, Brandywine, and off to the right is the A-frame. You know how many bedrooms are in that house? A big, giant uh, English Tudor, built probably about 19, uh, 1909. There's two bedrooms in there. And at the time, they, when we had bought our house, they wanted 180000 for that. There's two bedrooms in there. Well, diagonally across the street, there's a house that's still not done. A brand new house. It's, it's just been laying there. Shall you finish? You want to finish the project. Shall you finish? stick to itiveness is to stick to Christ. Ye are they which have continued with me. It is not by hearing Christ or following Christ, but by continuing with Christ. How? By the grace of God. And what is the bounty of his grace? My grace is sufficient for thee. I have chosen the way of truth. Thy judgments have I laid before me. I have stuck unto thy testimonies. Amen. What David writes. Are you sincere? May sincerity be your root of sustaining. Let integrity and uprightness preserve me. Now you may say, you, you, you may say, oh, if I just, just, just hedge, if I could just hedge once, maybe I'm tempted to hedge just a little. Are you tempted to do that? Well, why? Is it always right to do right? So, you know, I, I, I when, when, uh, when we got married and, and I got our first, uh, our first furniture that we ever bought, we still have. The, the bulk of it, we still own. And the woman said, and I didn't have any, I didn't have any rakes, or so we bought a house, I didn't have rakes or hose. And my sister said, go over there, she, this older woman is selling it. And she, and she said, well, what do you want for the rake, the shovel, and the, and the, what do you want for that? She said, $12. I said, $12? We weren't rich. I, I'm not bragging, we're not rich. And I said, oh, I'll give you 110. She said, no, I'll, I'll take you 20. And then I said, well, no, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll give you 90. See, we don't negotiate down, we negotiate up. <laughs> That's just the way I am. Now, if I'm at an auction and I'm bidding against, we're negotiating down. It's not an auction. 
But I'm not going to be accused of taking some old woman. So we had the opportunity this week. It was an old woman. She's got her walker. And I said, well, what do you want for, what do you want for the piano? And by the way, I don't want any money for the piano. I will not say. And the daughter's there. In, uh, in this piano. They don't make them anymore. This is Dick Gregg. She's, they said, well, uh, it's got a bench. It's got everything with it. And uh, I didn't even know the light went with it. She said, well, we'll take 300. And I said, I'll give you 400. I'm not there to take anybody. I'm not going to be accused of taking an old woman. I'll give her five. I ain't got nowhere to put it though. Say that again. I'll give her a flat, but I don't have anything anywhere to put it. He who loves the Lord would rather die than desert him. Does the captain keep the ship? Of course Jesus will keep the ship. Does the sheep ship keep the captain? Does the church keep Jesus? The captain doesn't abandon. Ship. A child is safest when held in the arms of his mother. There, there's always a danger. If, if they, they hand me the baby, they hand me the baby. I'm sitting there on the couch, they hand me the baby. And I, I, I prop this and that. What's the danger? Anybody know what the danger is? I mean, I got this new newborn. What's the danger? What's going to happen? You're going to fall asleep. I am. <laughs> How do you know all this? I'm going to fall asleep, and that kid's going to end up on the floor. It, it, it really worries me. I mean, I can. Um, and if you want to see and hear some snoring, man, watch a movie with my. Man, it, we fall asleep every everywhere anyway. I'm afraid I'm going to drop the baby. The child is safest when held in the arms of his mother. And the Christian is safest when held in the arms of grace. Amen. My grace is sufficient for thee. When a boat is tied to a rock, it is secure. And when we are tied to the rock of ages, Jesus Christ, we are secure. Hold up my goings in thy path, that my footsteps slip not, the word says. How? Because my grace is sufficient for thee. Has not a glorious army of saints and martyrs gone on before us? Have they not gone on before us? And God has given us a peek into that in Hebrews 12, a great cloud of witnesses. What a blessing for him to open the door for us to look at that as pillars of the church. How gracious the Lord to reveal them to us, sustaining us, encouraging us to finish our course. My grace is sufficient for thee. The greatness of a building is not in the laying of the first stone, which is Jesus Christ, by the way, but the laying of the last stone. He builds this building of lively stones the glory for a Christian is in finishing the work of grace, amen, that he will perform in us. Being confident in this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. God dwells in the humble soul. I dwell in the high and holy place. With him also that is of a contrite and a humble spirit. My grace is sufficient for thee. That's what he loves, is humility. God giveth grace to the humble. Is the way up to heaven, or is it the way down to heaven? The way up, the walk up, is the hard way. The way down, being humble, is the easy way. Humility, the way down, is the easiest way. Humility is the mother of all graces. It is the mother of all graces, for God giveth grace to the humble. My grace is sufficient for thee. What will sustain us? God's grace. 
Christianity, true Christianity is all, is all God-powered. Amen. The problem for people today is they do it in their own power instead of God's power. My grace is sufficient for thee. I guess we're done today. Have you heard enough? Every story has a hero. And the Bible's no exception. Christ, the hero of the faith. Christ, the captain of our salvation. Christ, the name when spoken is above all other names. Christ, the name in which the devils also believe and tremble. Christ, the one who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Christ, who now is alive forevermore. And such an one, help us, encourage us, and sustain us. Sure he can. There are people who are in dire, dire straits. The rest assured, my grace is sufficient for thee. And it is what the Savior says. Best regards in Christ, your pastor. Shake hands. <laughs>